Well, hello everybody. Here I am again on January 6, 2011. And I'm ready to talk about Gardner High School, the building you see in the background, which I've just discovered how to do. I'm working on what is called chroma key, and I'm sitting in front of a normal green background instead of my messy studio at GBS-TV. Instead, I'm over my shoulder is the Gardner High School building that I went into thousands of times, up and down three flights of stairs. And one more thing about there is right, if you notice a, a great big chair about 20 feet high. Well, Gardner, Mass was known as the Chair City back in those days because of the many furniture factories in town. One of them, the Haywood Wakefield, one of the biggest in the country, several others built various furniture and in fact there was even a company called McKnight that made the machinery that made furniture in the furniture factories. I actually worked for Mr. McKnight himself as a chauffeur one right after I got out of high school I was 18 years old and Mr. McKnight used to go out on the road and pedal his machinery that his factory made. I was his driver I was also his secretary. I typed letters for him, and I drove his car, which was a Studebaker, about a 1937 model. He would sit in the back seat, and he would tell me uh, how fast to go and where to go, and he knew all the roads by heart, didn't have to look at any maps. We went all over the country uh, driving around selling this machinery. Well, that's why they called it the Chair City, all those big factories in Gardner. Unfortunately, and I hate to say this, but the unions ran them out of town. The unions made it hard for them to pay the, the salaries and still make any money making furniture. So first they moved their furniture companies down south, so probably some of them still there, and others were moved over to China or wherever they are today. It's too bad, but Gardner doesn't have any furniture factories today. I hope they're still the Chair City, but I don't know. That chair that you're seeing right behind me there, that chair is about 100 years old, I would say. It used to be down by the Union Station, when they had a Union Station, when they had a railroad. All those things are gone now. They moved the chair in front of the old high school. And by the way, that's not even the high school today. That's, I don't know what they use it for. I've heard it might be a grammar school. But the new high school, <clears throat> the new high school is over close to where I used to live, out on Pearl Street by Dunn's Pond. That's where the new high school is. That's where I went and attended the re alumni band concert and the 50th reunion of my class in 1938. I'm going to try to post this video on the GHS website, but I'm also going to post it on YouTube because YouTube now has high-definition tapes or high-definition videos. I shouldn't say tape. Tape is out. Videos are in, recording directly into a computer off of my camera. And I hope this high definition picture looks okay to you. Now, why I made this video tonight, I had one thing I wanted to talk about, and this is something that I hope everybody will take to heart. And that is about the old people who mistake the brake pedal for the gas pedal and crash into a building. Well, that would never happen with me because when they first invented automatic transmissions, they made, the, so a lot of the cars had the brake pedal really wide, so either foot could hit the brake pedal. And I got in the habit of using my left foot for the brake. Today, people drive around with their left foot just sitting there doing nothing. But if you use your left foot on the brake and your right foot on the gas, you'll never hit the wrong pedal. Not only that, but your reaction time is much faster. If your left foot is poised right by the brake pedal, now don't ride the brake, that's bad, but don't, you know, just keep it near the brake pedal. You'll be able to push that brake really fast in case of an emergency, and you will never put the wrong pedal with your right foot. You'll, your right foot will be the gas pedal all the time, and you'll never crash into a building. Now, I don't know why they don't do that. I understand that in California, where I live today, the DMV will flunk you out of a driving test if you use your left foot on the brake. Well, that's a dumb move, and that shows how much the politicians know about what's right and what's wrong when it comes to driving safety. 
So I'm telling you that for now. I hope, I hope some of you will listen to that. I hope some of the politicians might listen to that and decide that maybe the right thing to do is to allow people to use the left foot on the brake and the right foot on the gas. And with that, I think I've talked long enough. I hope you enjoyed this little conversation about Gardner High School and about the past uh, history of that town and how it's changed. I understand today Gardner is basically a college town. They have several colleges there, and that's good. But it's too bad that all those factories are gone, just like in most of the rest of New England. All the factories are gone. They moved down south, then they moved overseas, Mexico or China or someplace. So I'm Red Blanchard, class of 1938, and I'd like to say to you, until the next time I see you, so long until then.